You are artists. You are superheroes. You can tell the world who you are more than the world can tell you who you are. The, the topic of this master class, and there have been a series of them here at uh, Duke Ellington, uh, art as activism. Um, tell me what that means to you. Are all artists activists? <laughs> That's a good question. Are all artists activists? Maybe to lesser degrees or more degrees, mm -hmm. sure. But, but for me, art is activism. It's, there is a power because you're, you're speaking to someone's intellect and their emotional self at the same time. Like those two parts of yourself, very important parts of yourself, can be fused mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. art. Uh, it makes you think about what you feel or feel something about what you think. And mm -hmm. to me, that mm -hmm. is a magic trick because sometimes uh, it, that's the best way to breed empathy amongst people. People have all kinds of rationales or reasons to separate themselves from each other or be apart from each other. But that gap being bridged, I think, is in a, we can make important realizations mm -hmm. in moments like that. And that is why the activism piece of this is critically important because we know that sometimes in a business, things that are popular may not always be what is good. And so um, we try to really instill in our young people to stay true to their art and think about the business piece, but understanding the integrity and what it means to have artistic freedom. Whenever I come here and talk to you guys, I always picture that I'm in there somewhere. They're just like you. I didn't have a lot of money growing up. We didn't have anything. But I took a long trip to Ellington every day and put my dreams together. I can tell you that this is the extent of my formal education. I mm -hmm. never went to school beyond Ellington. And I, I feel like they prepared me really, really well for, for things that, that I wouldn't have even anticipated I needed to know. Like, for instance, uh, criticism. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the fact that I could survive like uh, 17 vicious news cycles or, or, or whatever it is, uh, it, it, it instilled in me a sense of, of purpose and it gave me, a, gave me a feeling of refinement, which made me feel, you know, powerful as an artist. Uh, uh, it put me on a path yeah. of refinement. So I'm very grateful and I support the school because I, I know what it did for me. If it could do that for anyone else. It saved my life. Yeah, uh, and you're, that's a message that you impart to these young people. You, when you came out, the first thing you talk to them about is, you know, how powerful they are as artists and what that can mean in the world. Yeah, it's important, especially now uh, when the truth is, is more subjective and, and, and people are fighting over what history actually is. And, you know, the, the social boundaries are getting rigid and nativist and all these weird things are happening in, in our country, mm -hmm. in our culture, that I think art softens all those edges. It, it cultivates understanding amongst countrymen. It, it, it breaks down boundaries and it gives people who might not normally have a voice a very powerful voice. I have found if you play a long game, if you're true to your muse, your art, that the commerce will work itself out. Mm -hmm. uh, th th sometimes you might just be ahead of the world, which will make you feel crazy, but, but that's the game. Uh, that's why it's so important that you know yourself or know your perspective, or at least know that you don't know. You talk about dealing with criticism. Um, it's, it's part of, and you know, we know about what happened here a couple of years ago. Kids, uh, some of the kids were upset and others were upset with your last Netflix special. Um, is this an ongoing dialogue that you're having with the students here uh, and, and trying to um, let them know where you're coming from and maybe hearing from them as well? No, no, it's not a dialogue. I mean, these kids, can make any kind of conclusion about me that they want. What disappointed me about that day is that the critique of me wasn't based in, on anything about artistic merit. It was based off of social ideas that I thought were beside the point. 
that them as artists, these young people as artists, whether they know it or not, could very well one day face similar types of criticism for something that they believe or don't believe. They're just mm -hmm. working. Mm -hmm. and, and that this type of uh, stifling of art is, is dangerous for any reason. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that everyone should be able to say whatever they want to say. It's not one of these broad First Amendment rights. It has to do with art in particular and what it is and, and how if art is potent or powerful, how, how they can silence it. You can critique it all day long, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but silencing somebody or erasing somebody from history or, or these kids in particular not even considering its artistic nuance or merits is that's beneath the acumen that is expected of them. Mm -hmm. Is it harder to be a comedian now because of, you know, social media snap judgments, everybody just saying, oh, that was terrible and all that kind of thing? It's a hard thing to say if it's harder than that because uh, starting out in comedy, I think, was, was harder. Mm -hmm. You know, being a famous comedian is a different type of challenge. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that it's harder because in both instances you have to you have to uh, push through whatever your issue is. Early on, it's ineptitude or just not knowing or being mm -hmm. insecure. But but as you go further, you know, I would say that right now crowds are fragile. But I believe there are many like-minded people, and 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 they come to these shows and and they do empower me to some degree to be courageous. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy yeah. nowadays, but yeah. I don't know that it's hard. Can I tell you something? Um, we, we spent some time together uh, several weeks ago, and it was the first time I'd seen you in person uh, in decades, and you said some things to me that were very, very uh, humbling and very kind um, from when you first started doing comedy yes, uh, in the 80s. Um, and I guess you used to come, you came to the comedy clubs, we all know that, and you saw me and some of the other comics who were performing around that time. And, and that made an impression on you, you seeing the had, Washington you, comics. You all had a very profound impact on my life. Not just as comedians, but you know, as a young kid, being in an environment like that, all you, all you comedians were very dynamic, you know, would take care of me in your own, in your own ways. And uh, I really appreciated the comedic education I got from this circuit in particular. Uh, I, I couldn't have asked for a better start to my career between Ellington in the day and the Washington comedy scene at night and some of the great, great comedians I got to know and rub elbows with. Uh, I just feel real uh, gratitude is the word that comes. Well, you took it and you made it your own. You're an auteur, you're an original voice. Uh, voice of this generation, I think, and you know, because we talked about it that night, that all the Washington comics are, we're very proud of you man, and man, everything man. that you, you are doing. Thank man. you. Man. Appreciate Likewise, it. Likewise, man. I, I'm grateful for you, man. Thank you. Yes. I'm grateful for you.